Hey guys, let me fix that. Um, hey, everyone. okay, yeah, I'm tilted over here. I don't know what to do about this camera. It just keeps falling. So, I'm gonna take a poll over here in Periscope. If you got in Twitter, if you guys like the tilt, or if you would like me to hold my hand on it the whole time and keep it straight, and really whichever is, I'm open to both suggestions. <laughs> Maybe I'll do some of each. Hey guys, so hey Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy McKellar Motivational Monday. Either way is fine, Scott. Thank you. I'll do some shout outs here. The tilt is okay. The tilt is fun. Awesome. Love the attitude. It's more comfortable not to have to hold it. So yeah, that'd be great. A new perspective. I like it. If you guys are curious, so I'm here on Instagram Live, Facebook Live, and Twitter slash Periscope, which is really the same thing now. Um, uh, but anyway, <laughs> on Twitter Periscope, the camera's tilted because on my mount, one of the screws came out, and I haven't I haven't gotten around to uh, replacing it. It would not be hard to do. I just haven't done it. But happy birthday, Ms. H. Yeah, Christian, I think I'm staying safe. Are you guys staying safe? Thank you. I love the shirt, too. Dolly Parton. The writer, uh, Nina Weinman Swift of Christmas at Dollywood, she gave this to me before we started shooting. And I love it. You're watching Christmas at Grand Valley, Catherine? I know. Right now on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, one of my movies, Christmas at Grand Valley, is on. I just, this was the only time I had to um, to go live with you guys, so. You're watching Christmas at Grand Valley also, Jill? <laughs> cool. Well, it's two of me now. Oh, my God. So, hey, Travis uh, in Australia. Hello, Mike from Maine. Hello, Nicholas from the COVID capital of the U.S., New York. Um, <laughs> is that still the, the capital of, I mean, is that still where it is the highest? I have not been looking at, um, at the numbers these days. Hey, Gyro from Costa Rica. Hope I said that right. When are we going to start filming again? That's a really good question. I don't know when we're going to start filming again. I don't know. I don't know. I There's so much I don't know about that. Namely that I don't know. I do know that the next Matchmaker Mysteries movie was getting ready to start shooting. We were going to shoot it uh, April 2nd. I think we were going to start. That wasn't going to happen. They were like, oh, we're going to push it by two weeks. And I was like, yeah, this is going to push for, for more than two weeks. In the meantime, we're working on the script for the fourth one. So that'll be number three. We're working on the script. I just saw the outline come in for uh, the number number four. So we'll be ready to like shoot both of them when we're allowed to do that, when when they're when they're ready. You know, so you know, last time I last Monday, uh, I was really tired. It was really late. And I used this very calm voice. And I remember now some of you guys liked that more, like sort of calming. In other words, instead of coming at things with like energy, uh, to sort of come at it from my more pensive state of mind. And I'm a little sleepy today, so I could, I could do that. Hello, Daniel from New Hampshire. What would you guys like to talk about today? One thing that I would like to say is that I have a book coming out tomorrow. It comes out it's the Times Machine, and I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. This is my tenth McKellar math book, number ten. I don't believe it. It's ten. I started writing these things in. Um, I started writing. I started writing the first one in 2005. 2005. It came out in 2007. So 15 years. I've been an author. It's so crazy. Thank you, Nancy. Hey, Roxanne. Thanks for watching. <laughs> a lot of people are watching the Christmas at Grand Valley movie right now. But anyway, this is my news of the week that I'm really, I've been writing this book for four years now, I think. So this is for um, ages second through fourth grade. So ages, you know, what, seven through 10. Uh, and um, yes, this is very much like Doctor Who. I agree. <laughs> So anyway, it's multiplication and division, and it, 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 I teach it with, like, comics and fun, like, graphic novel style stuff. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of comics in it, and trying to make math fun. I think math is fun, but I know that you need, like, an extra dose of entertainment to make it that much more fun, and that's what I do. 
Uh-oh, what happened to Twitter? Oh, there we go. Did I lose service over there, you guys? Uh, anyway, so that's my... That's my big news that I'm really excited about. And um, anyway, so so this if you're curious about it, you can go to mckellarmath.com and you can read more about it there. In fact, it has its own website, thetimesmachine.com. It is sold on Amazon, yes. Your copy is coming on Thursday, right? Oh, awesome. Thank you, Jan. Yes, Suzanne, so I have books for ages 0 to 16 uh, at mckellarmath.com. You can find them all. And what's really cool about this, because I know that parents right now, in an unprecedented kind of way, have become their kids' teachers. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, parents are always our, our kids' main teachers, but this is different. Uh, and so this book fills in the gap. If you go to the slider button at mckellarmath.com, you'll see I've got books for ages 0 to 16. But there was this gap. There were no books for ages like 8 and 9 before. And now there is. And uh, and more than that, the multiplication and division has in the curriculum has now been covered. So no matter what help you need, and parents need help right now. They need extra help. Kids need extra help. There's, there's um, problems right now for our educational system. So I'm so thrilled. It couldn't be have come at a better time that, that now when the need is so great that I'm so happy I get to say, Hey parent, are you having a hard time with your kids math education right now? And we are, we all understand why I got you covered. I got you covered. I've got a book that will help you no matter how old your kid is from ages zero to 16. So times machine. Um, but you'll see all my books, all my books are all about making math fun and accessible and goofy, and silly, and lots of humor. And of course, the times machine in some of the comics, in many of them, there's time travel. You go to different places. It's really, it's really fun. Lots of random little history lessons. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Chris. You guys are all so sweet. Your eight-year-old is stuck at home with two teachers, a mommy and daddy. She wants a new teacher. Well, Benjamin, you know what? This is her age. This is for, for eight-year-olds, for sure. I am happier this week, Joel. I am. Thank you for noticing. I was never a, a teacher, like, in a classroom, although I have been a substitute teacher a couple times randomly for friends back at UCLA. But uh, not, but really, I teach through um, my books. Oh, that's awesome, Rob. Florida homeschool convention. That's great. Well, I hope that uh, I hope that the book helps a lot of a lot of people. What would I do if I if I, what would I do if you sang out a tune? Um, joke, whatever your name is. Uh, yeah, I would stand up and walk out on you for sure. So. Yes, I'm on the West Coast. I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, that's fantastic, Nikki. I can't wait to hear how it helps your nine-year-old. Yay. Thank you, Christy. You're going to order some of my books for your daughter? That's awesome. So I don't want to just talk about um, my math books. I want to talk about you guys, how you're doing. Um, do I still do yoga videos? I only did one yoga video, Elizabeth. It's called Daily Dose of Dharma. If you go to my Instagram bio, I think it's on... I think it's on Twitter too. It might even be on Facebook now. I have a link tree link, which I love because you click on it and there's a bunch of links. And one of the links is the uh, yoga DVD. Thank you, Michael. So you guys are doing okay? Yeah? Hanging in there? The beach made me happier, Vivian. Seeing my dad for the first time in five months made me happier. That was nice. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Jamie. Your first grader is like my math, my math books. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that. You got to go golfing? Good. See, it's like the stuff like that we normally do. It's so nice to finally do some of that. I missed my I missed my I haven't seen my sister in five months. Uh, I saw ugh, anyway, hopefully soon. Live stream a yoga video. I'm not a yoga teacher though, so I don't know if I should do that. I did a yoga DVD, but I'm I'm the one doing the yoga. 
but somebody else is telling everyone what to do. An actual yoga instructor. Her name is Christy Marston. She's she's amazing. I love the beach, Brian. Yes, the weather is nice here. Oh, are we back in lockdown? That's a really good question. Um, the bars just shut down again, but the restaurants are still open. I haven't been to a restaurant yet. Uh, we order we we order food from restaurants to help you know keep them going, but I, I haven't actually sat down in a restaurant and, and eaten. You went to Pigeon Forest last week? That's so cool. The Pigeon Forest, Tennessee. Yeah, I hit the reset button on 2020 already. I completely agree. I've, I've been doing all right. I, you know, I just, I don't know. Sometimes, um, sometimes it just gets really depressing. I just, it's just, there's just so much. Yes, it is. Dolly, Dolly Parton keeps me in a good mood too. She does. I love Dolly Parton. Life is treating me well, Harlow. Thank you. All things considered. Yes, it is. Florida bars are closed also. Yeah, we have mandatory masks here in California. If you are not able to social distance, if you're, if you're out anywhere or inside any building, I think. Yeah, I just, this is so surreal. The whole thing is so surreal that I, like I go from thinking this is so surreal and crazy and wacky to being like, oh my God, I'm so depressed. Child abuse is up by a thousand percent. Like, you know, and I'm like, and then I, and then that will overwhelm me. And yeah, and all the hatred all like the everything is a fight and <sighs> so <laughs> what I try to do because I am a, I am definitely an emotional person and I connect with things I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way and it, it gets to you uh it really really gets to you and so anyway what I what I've been trying to do is just focus on what can I do to help I'm in this unique position where I can, uh, people are willing to pay money to have me leave messages for them. So on this app called Cameo, I do video messages and it's not cheap, but that money, I donate it to children's charities. I don't keep any of it for myself. I, I've been giving it to Child Help, who deals directly with child abuse, which is a huge, huge extra problem these days. Um, no Kid Hungry, which is pretty self-explanatory. They feed kids. And then My Stuff Bags, which is an amazing charity that helps foster kids. So when kids first go into the foster system, they're ripped away from these abusive homes and they're finally um, in a safe place, but they have nothing of their own and they're scared. And My Stuff Bags gives them a bag of stuff that's their own. So it's got a blanket and a stuffed animal and an age-appropriate toy and an age-appropriate book. And sometimes I donate my, I buy my own books and donate them as well. And and, um, and I've been, I've been supporting them for a long time. And so I'm like, okay, well, I can do that. I can't have those. <laughs> and then, you know, as simple as helping homeschooling parents now with my books, with this one, you know, the timing. And again, the timing is just so great. Oh, get it. Timing times machine. Um, that I'm like, okay, I can help. I can help kids. I can do these videos, donate the money. I can help get the word out and help help parents not be frustrated with their kids and help them to, to have an easier time with math, which is what I've been doing forever anyway. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> air hug. Here's an air hug for Amy and everybody else watching. Okay. Air hug. Oh, actually I call that a virtual hug. I do it with my son when I'm not in the same city as him. Like if I'm shooting movie and stuff. So what I'm saying is let's, focus on what we can do to help, to help others. Do my math te books teach methods for math like they're currently teaching in schools? Uh, yes. I'm not sure which drawing lines think you're talking about, but yeah, in fact, no, I know. Um, do not open this math book, which is for ages, it's just for first and second grade and the times have changed, which is the new one for third and fourth grade. Both of them at the end have something called a new math translation guide for grownups because... A lot of the words are different and a lot of the stuff is different. Well, Jay Thompson, thank you. We can all do that. We can all give back. We can all find ways. That there's something that, that, that you do that you're good at, that you like doing that helps the world. And that's, that's our purpose. There's a lot of negative energy out there, Ben. I completely agree. And so the idea is how do we use ourselves as the best resource ever to do something positive and to help other people. Also, if you feel like you need help, to reach out for help. And also, if you feel like you need help, and sometimes I feel like I need help too, you use that moment 
if you can get out of yourself and help someone else, um, that can make you feel better. And self-care, yoga, meditation, writing in a journal. Thank you, Just a Geek. That's so sweet. Oh, awesome, Todd. I can't wait to hear. By the way, if, if you guys have if you guys have my books and you send me a picture of them, um, I, I just love seeing pictures of, of your kids with my books. It's, it's so awesome. Um, and sometimes I repost them. How do I stay so positive? And yes, exercise too, Bernie. Absolutely. I think part of how I stay positive, first of all, I'm not always positive. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm a human being. But part of it is um, a healthy diet. What we eat affects our mood in huge ways. Watching the wildlife around your house relaxes you. Nature is the contrary of normal. Just reach out. I don't know what that means. Hard to be kind to others when you can't go out. Well, not necessarily, Michael. You know, um, this charity I was talking about, My Stuff Bags, they help foster kids. They love handmade, um, like, blankets. Like, if you if you knit or if you, if you crochet or whatever, um, there's ways of reaching out and helping organizations, donating your time at home to do something. We all have so much power that we don't realize we have. What happened to, oh, that's so interesting. Why are the comments disappearing in Twitter? You, oops. What I'm doing over here. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing right now. You are what you eat. Yes. So I have to touch the screen and then I can see. It's interesting. I can see the comments then. You make a huge berry papaya banana chia bowl every AM to start your day. That's so cool. Feel it, don't feed it. Thank you, Max. This is a quote that somebody brought up. I'm not sure if it was the same person or not. Um, or for somebody who heard it, um, a food drive. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Kyle. That's so great. You did a citywide miracle day for food drive. That's amazing. Um, so feel it. Don't feed it. If you're having negative feelings or sad, sad feelings, angry feelings, whatever, cause there's a lot to be sad and angry about right now. The idea of, yeah, it's okay to feel it. You don't want to just sweep everything under the rug and pre pretend nothing's happening to be positive. You can feel it and say, okay, but you don't feed it. You don't like get in there and find a bunch of angry tweets and then tweet back like, yeah, you, you guys are horrible. We're on, it's us against them. Whatever it is, don't engage. Don't feed that. Feel it. Let yourself process it and say, wow, I feel really sad right now. How about that? That is really something. And then see if in that feeling, without even feeling better yet, you can do something positive for yourself. Like I was, I told a story a couple weeks ago. I was just not having it. I just was crying a lot. I just couldn't stop crying. I don't know. And, and I, I, uh, I was like, well, what would I tell, what would I say if I was on my motivational Monday? What would I say for someone to do? I'm like, I know well, just push through it and do something nice for yourself. So I started doing yoga while tears were literally still falling out of my face. I mean, I'm in like down dog and the tears are falling on the mat. <laughs> you know what? After a few minutes, I stopped, the tears stopped and I felt better. Yes, don't feed your anger with junk food. Yeah, you guys. You are what you eat. Your your moods are so affected by what you eat. Don't fight fire with fire. Yeah. Takes two to have an argument, right? If you water the weed, it will grow. That's very true. <laughs> Mental health is a huge thing nowadays. Yep. I think it probably always was. People just didn't talk about it as much. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. LA is most wanted. <laughs> I love these names. It's so funny. I do this just about every Monday, Lou. Sometimes I can't make it, but I always try. I just, I don't know. We have this amazing technology and to be able to use it and connect with you guys is really cool. I am sitting with my left leg up against the door. Yeah, I am. How'd you know that? 2020 gets one out of five stars. Yeah. 
car. There's a car parking next to me and is blinding me for a second. My family is doing fine. You know, we're doing fine. I mean, it's not easy for anybody, but I have a lot to be grateful for. My family is healthy. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's staying safe. The sunshine and the rain falls on the same tree. It's nice. When I say this time is the best life or the worst life, I don't think you can judge anything in the moment. I think you have to look back on it. This could be the most important time of transformation for us as, as a society and also personally as ever, maybe. Or it could be the unraveling of things. I don't know. <laughs> Probably will be different things for different people. That's my guess. This is one thing that I believe in very strongly. And that is that we tell, and I didn't make this up, believe me. I've heard it from a lot of different sources. We tell ourselves a story. We have a belief about our life. We have a belief about the world around us. And then we, our brains, are really good at finding evidence to support those belief systems and dismissing evidence to the contrary. So you can have two different people who have two different belief systems watching the same news, reading the same stuff, and they will get very different things out of it, like opposite things. So pay attention to what your biases are and try, I, you know, being open-minded is, is, uh, is really key to growth. Otherwise we just stay stuck. Confirmation bias. Yep. Confirmation bias. Yes, I have heard that term. All right, guys. Anything else you guys want to, I guess we want to talk about before we go? I'm going to think I'm going to do a little meditation here. I'm pretty relaxed. All right, guys. Um, I got to go. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Sending you all a big hug and a kiss. Mwah. Bye.